Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to share some suggestions for building a PC specifically designed for music production. So, here we can see the average cores uh, is 4 for basically every DAW except Studio One that requires only 2 cores as the minimum and the maximum on the minimum uh, recommended is 3 gigahertz of clock speed so you should be fine with any modern CPU honestly it shouldn't be any problems so when we're talking about the hardware the most important part is the CPU the CPU is basically the brain of your system so it processes all the data in music production it's mainly used for plugins and synths and you should prioritize higher clock speeds instead of higher core counts because a core can be overloaded and if one single core gets overloaded all the audio that is going to pass through uh, your system is going to have glitches and problems so I would suggest you to prioritize higher clock speeds and stability overall so I would choose for a modern platform um, either a Intel i7 12700K or um, AMD Ryzen 7 7700X <laughs> they perform pretty similarly the amd one uh, got a better power consumption and efficiency while the intel one is a bit more stable for audio programs i would choose probably the cheapest one of the two because they perform basically the same so let's talk about the ram the random access memory the ram is the main pool of instructions for your cpu in music production, the RAM is important because it preloads sounds from sample libraries. So if you're using a large orchestral contact library, having enough RAM, mm, it's essential to have a good playback audio. The RAM helps the CPU to access data quickly, um, to retrieve all the information. High density and fast RAM should be helpful for your CPU to, to load everything uh, with less latency. Even if the speed is really important, so the megahertz, I would probably go for higher capacity RAM over um, higher uh, speed one, because uh, you can have a really fast RAM, but if you got like eight gigabytes of super fast RAM that you cannot actually use your programs without having stutters and glitches and other problems. It is a bit different if you are perhaps an electronic producer, electronic music producer, and you use a lot of synths like Serum or Massive, uh, then I would prioritize the CPU much more. But if you are using a lot of um, libraries, RAM is a must, right? Enough RAM is a must. Okay, now we are on the motherboards. Now, I am pretty agnostic when it comes to motherboards, even though they are an essential part of the system. The only things that I would look for uh, when I'm searching for a new motherboard are the M2 slots, actually. So how many SSDs you can fit in your motherboards. I would prioritize that over Wi-Fi because it is not a must for me, but you do you, okay? Um, also, another thing to consider when choosing a motherboard are the connectivity options. Um, how many USB ports do you need, you know? Also, robust power delivery. Some motherboards vendors have different BIOS, all right? and different BIOS are using your CPU, your RAM a little differently. Some are more efficient and so you should do a little bit of research. Let's talk about storage, the drives. These are really important. Uh, first of all, they are used for accelerating your loading times. So faster read and write speeds on your SSDs uh, can help with that. Uh, 
and they of course are used for the project and file management. So if you use a drive for your operating system, if you use a drive for your project files, uh, your system is going to be much more fluid. And, you know, M2 SSDs are much faster than hard drives, uh, the mechanical ones. I would do a mixer, one or two SSDs for the OS and programs, and a huge density hard drive for the finished projects. So you can allocate everything over there and your system is a bit lighter. Okay then, lastly, we got the power supply unit. I'm not gonna say that much about it, but yeah, it's the heart of your system, so it needs to be high quality. But luckily for you and for me, <laughs> there is the PSU tier list online and they got a huge catalog with all of the models that they have reviewed, so it's great. And when you're looking at the, the list, you would understand that there is difference between uh, the build quality, and that's the thing to prioritize, and the um, efficiency tier. But yeah, uh, I'm just going to use the um, tier list online because I'm not that versed with <laughs> power supply units, but that's a great starting point actually. And now we have the builds. There we are, okay. So. I've made this, um, I've divided in uh, three categories. We got the budget build, Intel and AMD, the mid-range, same things, and the high-end. All right, so for the budget build, uh, I've choose a 12600K, because if you see here, we got a lot of cores, but we just need four. 3.7 should be the base uh, clock speed, so we are already over the minimum required. For the fan, I like the Thermarite Peerless Assassin. I watched a lot of good reviews about it. For the motherboard, I've chose this Gigabyte. I've just chose the one with three M2 slots. For the OS drive, Samsung 9080 Pro, 980 Pro, 500 gigabytes should be enough. Silicon power, well, you can see, you can see all of them over here. You can use this build as a starting point. I also did an AMD budget build here. You can see the difference is mainly the CPU and the motherboard. That's just the, the, the actual difference. The other parts are the same. Then we got the i7. I step up the motherboard to a 790 and the capacity of the SSDs. Also, of course, the PSU is not 600 watts, but 750, just to be safe. The price of this build is 1,100 euros. Oh, right, for the other ones, we got 1,870 for the Intel, 928 for the AMD one, weirdly enough. But yeah, well, they are much more power efficient, so you should be able to, to cut the cost over there. Then for the mid-range AMD, same thing. I just changed the CPU and the motherboard, and of course the um, capacity of the SSDs. The price is 1,108. And for the eye hand, <laughs> well, the price is a bit higher, but you'll see the main difference is in the storage and the density of the RAM. The rest is basically the same. Of course, the CPU is bump up. Same thing for the Ryzen one. So feel free to stop this video, check out all the components and let me know. And I hope this is going to be useful for you. So. Thank you, thank you very much, and um, well, see you next time.